Hello everybody, this is Joel Toppin. This is uh, video number five of how to create uh, Vassal modules. And what we're going to do in this video is show you how to create game pieces in such a way that if you have a single piece, you don't want multiples of that piece, you only want one piece to ever exist in your module, how do you go about doing that? Because anything you make in a game piece palette, there's an infinite number of them. Here's how you go about doing that. What we do is we actually create what's called as a, a startup stack and you can do this within a map window. So I'm going to expand the main map window in my module. And if I right click on that main map, I just expand it so I can remember what I have underneath it. When I, when I right click on main map, the little pop-up menu gives me all kinds of things I can add. Uh, the thing I'm looking for here is I want to add a at start stack. It's near the bottom. I think it's fifth up from the bottom. And I'm going to choose to uh, add that to the module. Now it asks me where uh, where I'm going to position this thing, um, and it asks me for a name and what board it's going to belong to. This is all very important stuff. I'm going to call this particular uh, at start stack. I'm going to call it AP's marker. And I have to choose a board for it to belong to, and this is especially important in, in uh, modules that have multiple boards that have been stitched together using the default setup tool. We talked about that, I believe, in video number two. Uh, in this case, we only have one map, so when I click the drop-down box, there's only one thing for me to select. If you don't select something here, your game pieces will not appear anywhere because you don't. if you don't assign it to a board, you can put as many game pieces into this uh, as you want into this little stack as you want, but it won't actually appear unless you select uh, a board. So that's very, very important. It's now going to ask us about the positioning of this marker. Um, what I'm going to do here, it's, again, it's going to ask me for x, y coordinates. Well, obviously I'm not going to know that off the top of my head, so I'm just going to give it a general one. I'm going to tell it to go 500 pixels in. And uh, the positioning here is from the upper left-hand corner of the map. So 0, 0 is the absolute le upper left-hand corner of the map. Uh, when I choose 500 by 500, it'll, it'll shift 500 pixels to the right and 500 pixels down from the upper left corner. I'll select OK. Now, here's that folder. I've, I've just created a folder called AP's Marker. It's an at start stack folder. If I right-click on that folder now, I have the option to add a single, multiple, uh, single or multiple pieces or an imported class. Again, I'm not going to tell you about multiple pieces here. Let's just add a single piece. So let's add single piece. We go to the basic piece, double-click on it, double-click on where it wants the image, and we're going to actually use the AP's marker. Now I know we created one of these in the pieces tray, but this is the one I really want to have in my module. And I'll call it APs. Click OK. Now, since I'm only creating one of this piece, I don't want any delete functionality because I don't want you to be able to delete this piece. I want it to always be available on the map. I don't want you to clone it because I only want one of this piece. So I'm not going to add that function to, the, to this game piece. What I am going to show you though is how do you put a reverse side. You got a game piece that needs to flip over. How do you do that? Well, what you're going to need to do is add a layer. So I'm going to choose to add layer. It's fourth from the top in the uh, available traits. Now it's got this very intimidating looking uh, properties panel will then show up. What we need to do is add the name of the command. This is uh, just a way for you to remember what this particular layer property does. And so I can tell it flips counter over. Okay, so uh, if, if I really want to remember what this command does at a glance, that's what I can do. I want to make this thing always active. There are times when you won't want to do that, but for a game piece that simply flips over, you want to make sure that the layer is always active. Think of it this way. Think of your game piece as being uh, like a sheet of paper on a table, and the layer is like a uh, a second sheet of paper that fits over the top of your pre-existing sheet of paper. Now if I don't make it always active, if I leave that unchecked, then I have to have a command that will activate the layer. That, that is to say, uh, the command will trigger uh, the mechanism that puts the second piece of paper on top of the first piece of paper. Uh, I don't really need that extra step here, so I'm going to choose to have it always active, so these two pieces of paper are always on top of one another. 
Now, uh, do I want to loop through levels? You can create multiple levels to a game counter. This is especially useful when a particular game counter can be in one of multiple states. Uh, many times in a game you have to flip a piece over and then when it takes another hit you have to substitute the pre-existing reduced piece for another game piece and then that one when it takes a hit it flips over to a weak inside and, and on it goes. Uh, with the layers tool you can streamline that so every time you uh, uh, increase or decrease a level you adjust the image uh, so you don't have to, to exchange counters. You can actually have one counter that steps through multiple uh, levels of strength. For a game piece that simply flips over, all we need to have are two levels, though. But we do need to have commands for these. Uh, the checkbox for levels follow expression value. These are, ex these are more, um, more or less uh, advanced tools we're not going to talk about. Underneath when highlighted, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to use that. The offsets... If you have a reverse image to the piece, you need to make sure that both game pieces are exactly the same size in terms of number of pixels. Otherwise, it's going to look really strange when you use the commands. However, occasionally you'll need to add a layer to a game piece that's going to put like a dot or something. Uh, you just Maybe you just want a dot or a star to appear on a game piece and the image is smaller. Well, the offset does allow you to adjust the positioning of how that layer is going to appear when it's enabled. We're not going to do anything with that here because our game pieces are the same size. The reverse image, uh, in other words, is the same size as the front image. All right, what do we want to have here? For increase level, I want to choose to have the command flip. And since the game piece is only ever going to be in one of two states, I don't have to add a uh, command for decrease level. If it could be in one of four states, it might be necessary to say, call this one increase and this command call it decrease or something like that. In our case, we're just going to add the word flip. The keystroke for that command, I'm going to click in here and then I'm going to press control, I hold control button down and hit F. Uh, I prefer to use control F for flip because that's a common um, instruction. It's, it's common to many, many modules. Now, we go down to the bottom part here. This is where our layers are. You see that there's this wide panel that says double click here to add new image. And then over on the right you see this like a scrollable list and it, uh, it simply has at the top image one and nothing else beneath it that's selectable. That is because at present we only have one layer on this game piece and that layer is occupied by the base image that we've already inserted. In other words, the basic piece image is what appears at layer number one. What we need to do is add a new level. So let's click the add level button and voila, see up here now we have a, uh, uh, an add level. Uh, when, we, when we hit add level we have now multiple uh, layers now to this game piece. Now again image one, we want to keep that blank. That's our basic piece image. If we were to select this and double click in here and add any other picture, it's going to goof things up. Okay, we want this layer to be absolutely transparent and to contain no image. Now image number two, that's layer number two to this. That layer is where we're going to put our reverse side image. So now we select that, make sure we have image two selected. Double click here to add new image. And in our file browser, we're going to choose to add the, the image that I have for the reverse side of the APs marker, which is APs plus 10. We can also name the layer. Now, we don't need to do, again, if we click image 1, we want this transparent, and we don't want to change its name. As long as this is blank, the name of the piece will be whatever we assign to basic piece. For the following layer, though, this particular layer, once this layer is activated, it will supersede the basic piece image. It will replace it. And we can also replace the name. And since the name of the piece is a little different, we could simply call the piece APs plus 10. So we type that in there. And so whenever we move that game piece, the Vassal module will report it as APs plus 10 as long as this is the image that is face up. Another way we could do this though, since the basic image piece is simply APs, we could just simply put a space plus 10 
and choose the is suffix uh, checkbox here. And what that will do is it will take the basic piece name and it will apply the layer name here to the suffix. Uh, so it, it achieves the same effect as typing everything in here but with fewer keystrokes. We'll select OK. And now we have uh, our single piece with a basic piece trait. And now we have a flips counter over. See, I, I added that flips counter over a mnemonic. Uh, that tells us that this particular trait, all it does is flips the counter over. We select OK. And now when I go up here to File and New Game should see our game piece already on the map and there it is right there. So we can move that piece around you'll see it's reporting it as APs. When I right click on it, it there's the command to flip it over. When I select it you'll see it flips it over. Basically what Vassal does is it covers up the basic piece image with what we put in that level number two image slot. So, and when we move it, it calls it APs plus 10 because it's using the basic piece name and it applies the suffix of a space plus 10 to that name. Now, again, this is, this is the best way to create game pieces in a module where the game piece, you only want one of it, you don't want it deletable, you don't want it clonable. This is the best way to do that is simply to create at start stacks already on the map. Let me show you one more thing in this video about this. Let's close the module down here and let's look at once more at the editor window. If you double click on the APs marker at start stack folder, uh, you'll see that it has the name of that folder, the XY coordinates of where that where the game pieces of that folder are going to appear. If I choose reposition stack, it gives me this little pop-up of the uh, of the map and those it, this is a strange thing, but if, if uh, I haven't saved the module, exited and re-entered, if I exit and re-enter, it'll actually show me the image here, but until then, it just gives me a generic white image. Uh, but what I can actually do is I can take this and I can drag it on the map and I can pre-position it to where I want it. Say I want this thing, uh, in, the, in our game here, it's going to appear, I want to appear in the... Uh, uh, the same row as number three on the general records track. So I just drag it somewhere in here, choose OK, and it adjusts the XY coordinates for me. Choose OK. Now you can't do that positioning. This reposition stack does not appear enabled until you have a game piece in the folder. If you want multiple game pieces in the folder, you can do that as well. So I'll just copy and paste the second marker inside there so you can see what this looks like. And if we go up to here to File and New Game, we'll see that there is our APs marker. Well, there's two of them now because I put two in that at start stack, and they appear exactly where I want them to be. So that is how you create Vassal module uh, images that are on the map, non-clonable, non-deletable.